wasn't a garage. It was just a, it was a roof with six posts mm -hmm. and that's it. Every, so it, it did keep water out. It's still a one car garage. <laughs> yeah, it is. In a way. Yeah. I mean, the space no walls. hasn't expanded a ton. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. Compared to the teeny tiny space we were in, in our one car garage at, in our little home, um, it's probably quadrupled. It's 400 square feet. Yeah. Right. Okay. I can't remember. And so maybe not that yeah, much. Yeah. But it's still really, I mean, it's tight in here. Yeah. But it's perfect for our scale. And the reason, the other reason why we really felt like we needed to move was because we knew we wanted to grow the business and the home and, you know, domestically. Um, but we didn't know, we, I knew we weren't making enough money to pay rent on mm. a, a small kitchen somewhere. Oh, right. You know, I just didn't feel like, oh, we can't put out that 1000 or $2,000 a month for renting space. Not yet, at right. least. And renting so, space where we could butcher, like a commissary right. kitchen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That I would commute to. That seemed out of our league mm -hmm. at that point yet. It still feels that way yeah. in some ways. I'm so glad that you're on site, you're home mm -hmm. doing this, you know. Um, so, yeah. So that's why we moved. Um we got a giant tax return that year and we put it to good use on our down payment. Mm -hmm. And, um, we even took out some little private loans with some other friends yeah. that wanted to help us. And they knew that this Quite was a few small loans, like yeah. three or four probably. And, and our, these friends, they knew that this was both a business and a domestic move. They yeah. knew that this was going to help launch us, if anything would, mm -hmm. to 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 get getting Meat Smith off the ground. So for the sake of the family in its entirety, yeah. they really helped support us do in doing that. So. Yeah. And then we set to work to make the shop functional because all we had here, like I say, is just a six posts and a roof and a dirt floor. And so we actually did quite a few classes in our home in our house we still did yeah for while we were building this place mm -hmm. and a lot of it was built it, it takes labor clearly to build a structure and um we were able to trade and a lot of labor was even just donated by mm -hmm. people that liked what we were doing mm -hmm. um out of the generosity of yeah. their hearts and because of their own convictions and i remember the first thing we did with the shop was the slab Yep. And that was like the first year we lived here. That was mm -hmm. pretty quick, right, right away. away. Mm -hmm. And then we it was, excited. <laughs> yeah, and and that was awesome. And we had Colin, I think it was his name, and he came out and he was a finish, he was a finisher, a concrete finisher, which is an art, by mm -hmm. the way. It is not easy because it requires great finesse in a very short time. Mm -hmm. And you are rushed to do something smooth and uh, and that takes finesse and it's perfect and yeah. it has to be perfect on account <laughs> of the fact that it's concrete and it's, it's going to last forever yeah. and so the biggest so we built forms and my dad helped and my brother-in-law and mm -hmm. uh, andrew was there helping and uh we built forms and put the lattice of rebar in and the truck came and colin was there and colin who was quite he was a quiet guy by personality he took over like a boss and like an expert and he ordered us all around and he finished this thing perfectly and beautifully mm -hmm. and that was as a uh trade for his girlfriend mm -hmm. to take more classes <laughs> with us that's right which was awesome yeah and camille, camille yeah. yeah and so that uh that's the slab we're on and then it was a slab for many years mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's we right. couldn't use it. Right. Uh, it was just a slab again and kept doing classes in the home. And then I feel like the next thing... and oh, Go ahead. All the while, we're searching on Craigslist. Yeah, keeping our eyes out. Yeah, and any... we did not have a blueprint of the shop all previously mapped out. Mm -hmm. um, I just knew vaguely that I didn't want to lift carcasses, so I knew I needed a trolley system. I right. knew I needed huge wood cutting surfaces and huge stainless surfaces. Mm -hmm to work on and uh, I kind of had the spot picked out where the walk-in would go but again that's not a result of having a blueprint but because I already had the walk-in mm -hmm. <laughs> so I knew exactly its dimensions yeah and where it would go in the shop right to be right. I think that is a good illustration of the other path that we took which I guess is the slow growth incremental method is that while 
so one of the costs is that things take longer, but the other is that you are intimately engaged in every step. You are yeah. you are the labor, for example. You're you mm-hmm. are the person that is going to build the shop. Yeah. yeah. That is definitely part of the slow growth model is that you're actually engaged in the nuts and bolts of every single process. Yeah. Um and you know, I don't know that that worked for us. It was also very stressful and mm-hmm. the you, you, we could not quantify the amount of time and hours it takes because it's just too much. Yeah. Um, whereas the, the more upfront capital uh, approach to doing things is that other people who are actually experts in those fields, are you're able to hire them. You're doing a lot more delegation. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so they are making those things happen. Whereas mm-hmm. our whole growth period has been, or the building of this business has been 100% hands-on. You right. are the driving force of each step. You're the boss of each project. Um, there's very minimal delegation. Yeah, you reco- like none. You yeah. recognize a need, like okay, we need a new home. Mm-hmm. How are we going to do it? Uh, okay, learn the real estate industry, and like, <laughs> yeah. okay, we've got the home. We need to build a butcher shop. So okay, I'm going to become a general contractor, mm-hmm. and then you learn that whole industry, like how to build a building, which. You know, I have an an immediate upfront reticence story because I, it's the unknown. It's hard. I don't. Yeah. I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to have to do that. But, but then if you look at what you actually want, you just do it. And what you're capable of. And we had already built our home. And I grew up. My dad is a builder. Right. And, so it wasn't so completely foreign ground. That wasn't completely unknown yeah. to me. And nonetheless, I was still really grateful for one of our good friends, uh, Drew, on Island donated a lot of his time just because he's into small scale agrarianism and he's a builder on island and he he put in a lot of free mm-hmm. hours on this shop yeah and um that he'll cash with framing, in someday yeah with, <laughs> he tells us that one day he'll he'll take some classes with i us, know he so. should okay the end of phase two was waiting for years oh right that's part of it sometimes. With the slab. With the slab. It yeah. was poured. We got a giant concrete in here. And then we got the... It, and then we just had to wait. Right. And <laughs> right, it was, a, it was a concrete slab. We were still slowly acquiring things on Craigslist. Yeah. The walk-in was just leaning up against a post. The uh-huh. sink was just sitting here, useless. Yeah. No walls. And um, I found a local slaughterhouse that was closing. And so I was able to purchase the remain what was left of their trolley system so that's the roller hooks that happened that at that time yeah because it was sitting here on the slab oh, right. floor for a long time you're right okay uh without new walls that's right but you know yeah. under not getting rained on uh-huh yeah um.